Emil Griffiths, born in 1938 in the U.S. Virgin Islands, moved to New York in the 1950s. When Emil Griffith moved to New York, he lied about his age and said that he was 16 when he was 15 because he wanted a job. He worked as a delivery boy, then became a designer. One day, he took his shirt off because it was a hot day, exposing his body. And he was asked to go to the gym with Howie Albert, his employer, to meet Gil Clancy. Emil was told to take his shirt off once again and that he was going to box. Emil said, I'm not going to box nobody. But he ended up giving it a shot. Gil Clancy, after seeing his body, immediately put him under his wing. Gil Clancy taught Emil how to move, how to avoid getting punched, and how to hit people with a left counter. As most people are right-handed, he competed in the Golden Gloves and won, even with his sloppy style. After all, all he had was a strong left jab. He then won the next bout and lost his first fight at the record of 13-1. After this, he used his winnings to get his family to the States, and even opened a store for his mother. Emil and his family had an unbreakable bond. For most combat sports athletes, their family and loved ones do not watch their fights, at least whilst it's happening. But his family had a whole section of the crowd just to cheer him on. Right next to the politicians, celebrities, and gangsters, he won 22 of his first 24 fights before becoming the number one contender for the Ring and Lineal Welterweight Championship. Kenny the Kid Perret, born March 14, 1937, in Cuba. Perret started his boxing career in Cuba at the age of 17. He fought his way up the totem pole to the date May 27, 1960, the night that he won the ring and lineal welterweight titles. He was a great fighter, but his style had its weaknesses. Whilst champion, he lost two non-title fights, one against Denny Moyer and the other one against Gaspar Ortega, all of which Emil Griffith has already beaten. So when it came to Emil Griffith versus Benny the Kid Barrett, the betting odds were in Emil Griffith's favor. Although he got used to boxing, Emil did not like getting hit. Perret liked getting hit. Perret is willing to get hit 25 times just for one punch. Emil cracked the solid chin of Perret in the 13th round to become the new welterweight champion by a KO. <laughs> That moment you saw him in the news. The Milk Griffith celebration got him on talk shows, front pages of newspapers. Everyone started to love Emil Griffith for his personality. Emil Griffith versus Gaspar Ortega 2. This fight took place on television, which at the time everyone had except the very, very poor. This was Emil's first fight on television, and he says it's his hardest. Griffith has always been one to enjoy the aspects of boxing that, well, did involve boxing, and this had a lot of it. Posing for pitchers, public weigh-ins, and all on a national level. He calls this his favorite fight, and he retained the title. Benny the Kid Perret received his rematch against Emil Griffith on September 30th, 1961, at Madison Square Garden, the arena of combat sports. Benny had no fight since his loss against Griffith, whilst Emil had two fights. He only had two months to recover and prepare for the fight, whilst Benny had five months with no fights. Fifteen hard rounds later, via split decision, Benny Perret has won back the welterweight championship. After this, in a rare fashion, Benny Perret attempted to become the first simultaneous multi-divisional champion in boxing history, challenging Gene Fulmore for the National Boxing Association's middleweight championship. Boxing was at a boom period, and the welterweight division was looking great, no matter if it was Ortega, Perret, or Griffith as the champion. Perret's fights will always make it at least to the double digits rounds, which means if you would watch a Perret fight, you would at least get nine series of ads, one between every round. Emil Griffith had a flamboyant personality and an explosive style that was able to knock out anyone, including the strong chin of Perret. Perret's chin was cracking though. Every fight he became weaker and weaker. And if Benny Perret had a good coach, he would have known this sooner and changed up Benny's style. 
There is no way that Coach Alfaro did not know of this after the Gene Fulmer fight. Manuel Alfaro, Perret's coach, was not a regular boxing coach. He did not know how to fight. He knew how to talk and he knew how to make money. He made money whilst using Perret's as a pawn. Emil wanted the title back. All he did was train. Emil Griffith said that if Perret said anything at the weigh-in, he was going to punch him. During the weigh-in, when Emil was on the scale, Perret said maricon, which means faggot in Spanish. Griffith is a sensitive human being. He's a kid who has feelings. Likes to be loved. Likes to be liked. And since he was sensitive about his his personal sexual habits and all that to begin with, this exaggerated the whole thing in his mind. Brett was just smiling and laughing at him, and Emil went to go and swing at him, but Clancy stopped him. Emil Griffith was indeed a homosexual, and at this period of time, it was completely unheard of. The newspaper reported that he was a homosexual using the term unman. I like men and women both, but I don't like that word homosexual, gay, or faggot. I don't know what I am. I love men and women the same. But if you ask me which is better, I like women. An Emil Griffith quote from a Sports Illustrated interview. Any of the kid Peretz fighting style, like stated previously, was very embellic, but it paid off. By the end of the sixth round, Griffith was knocked down by Perret and got up by the count of eight. And by the twelfth round, Perret's chin cracked for good. This is probably the tamest round of the entire fight. Not bad, as Perret was locked again. Perret was locked him. Perret against the ropes, almost helpless. A minute to go. And they're going to stop it. They're going to stop it as Perret drags to the canvas. Perret goes down from sheer exhaustion. Look at him there. As his hand is to his mouthpiece out. Dr. Schiff is coming over to look at him. Perret has collapsed from exhaustion from that beating on the ropes. The result was not only Emil Griffith defeating the bully and reaching the top once again, the result was also Benny Perret being put into a coma and dying 10 days later. Emil was devastated by this. He was so concerned over Perret that he didn't even celebrate after the fight. Hey, Emil, but because we're all holding our breath a little bit to see how Benny Kid Perret is. Thank you very much, John. I'm very proud to be the World War Champion again. And I hope Parrot is, is uh, feeling very good, which the one that tell me how he feels. Uh, uh, Benny, and uh, for the next few fights Emil had, he stayed out of the corner due to what happened to Perret. Immediately after the fight happened, the critics of Emil and his team and the sport in general started pouring in. But the sport stayed alive, mostly due to all the blame being shifted to the referee and Benny's last fight for the middleweight title, where he got dominated. Benny, before the fight, called his wife and said that he was sick and did not want to fight, but his coach, Afero, forced him to. Afero knew that this was his last fight. Perret laid there dying in the ring. Alfaro is alleged to say, now I have to go and find a new boy. Boxing was dropped from TV and all combat sports popularity dropped in America until the early 70s with Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier. Emil Griffin may have not been a vocal member of the LGBTQ community, I mean he didn't even know the definition of bisexuality, but his social impact via his feud with Perrette is undeniable. Seeing a black bisexual immigrant on your TV during the civil rights movement and him being the best fighter in the world is something you wouldn't expect, but it happened.